Live. Hi. <laughs> good morning. Good morning, everyone. How's everybody this morning? Okay. Praise God. And so we are in the Disciples' Victory this morning, and we are moving to week four, which is praying in faith. And so I'm just going to open us up in prayer. Father God, we come to you this morning, and I just thank you, Father God. Hallelujah, Father God. We thank you that we get to pray, Father God, and that every time we pray, Father God, it builds up our faith. It, it helps us to connect to you, Father God. And so I just ask that you increase in me, Father God, as I decrease, as I will share what you have um, laid out for us this morning, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And so this morning we're going to, it's day one, we are going to talk about claiming God's promises. Now I want to bring it to our attention that in the disciples' cross, this is where we learned how to pray and how we go into um, the um, the um, enter into the gates and, and all those things that now that we have learned those things. And let's just talk about that for a few minutes because I think it's important that as we're going through our disciple training that we don't forget those things. And so as we, some may remember, and if you have it, you can put it up, but in the disciples' cross, that's where we learned that Christ was in, not the hand, Christ was in us. And so that we have to have the word and that we have to have prayer and fellowship and witness. That is part of discipleship. And so in that is where we learn that our relationship with Christ would grow by praying in faith. And so one of the memory scriptures that um, for that section was John 15 and 7. So let's turn to that right quick because I think that is important. If you, let me, I said I was going to turn to it, so let me turn to it as I give you all the opportunity to turn to it. And it's a familiar scripture. It's actually one of our memory scriptures. And really, as we are going into, as we are in um, Bible school, we're talking about abiding in Christ. And this is one of the scriptures. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. And for those that are in TV land, that was an audible. And so um, this week's goal, as we have our books, and this is for anyone, I like when Pastor Melanie did that, this is for anyone that may be joining us for the first time, this is the Disciples Victory, and so we are in week four. So this week's goal, we will be able to experience God's victory in spiritual battles by praying in faith. And so we have, we should have already developed habits of spending time with the master, living in the word. And what I noticed is as we live in the word, those memory scriptures that are before each week is something that you can do to meditate on every day so that those scriptures get in your heart because it is important because um, they are called memory scriptures for a reason and they really set the foundation for the teaching. And so we're also going to learn through this section is how to use the guide to meditation. I know for me, I, I kept saying, how do you meditate? How do you meditate? And so I love it that our um, disciples' books, they teach us how to do things step by step. And then we're going to continue learning God's word in our hearts and our hearts and hand, and that was the presentation that they had up, but you don't need to put it up right now. And then, of course, using prayer and faith, form in your prayer time. We're also going to talk about a guide for prayer as well, and then fellowshipping with believers, sharing with someone the shield of faith, part of the spiritual armor, 
and witnessing to the world, we should have our relational witness chart um, that has names of people on it that we can't just, you know, really the goal is for us to be praying for the world, to be praying for others. And the relational witnessing chart helps us to put people's names on there people you encounter at work, people you may encounter in the store and you get they, their name. I know when I first came to Ayers, Pastor Keith said, I pray for everybody every morning, and I'm thinking, that's a long prayer. I imagine that has really grown, but I also have a poster board in my office where I have added all the children's name to it. And so on a specific day during the week, um, those children's, not that they're not prayed for during the week, but I'm saying calling out their names. Um, and when people come to the house, I say, go upstairs and add your children's <laughs> name too. Because it's sometimes as you're calling out, the, you, as you're praying, you may not remember everyone's names. And so this week's scripture memory verse is 1 John 5, 14 through 15. And that's 1 John chapter 5. Four, verses 14 through 15. This is the confidence we have approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. And so that is a memory scripture that I um, suggest that we learn that because it helps us when we are praying to build up our faith. Well, God, I ask for this, and if it's according to his will, he hears us, and it, we, it shall be done. So um, we're going to, as we learn God's words in our hearts and hands, we will learn how to grasp God's words. So could you put up the hand for a minute? I think Pastor Melanie went over this, um, or it might have been Pastor Keith, I don't remember. Um, but here, this is very important as we're talking about prayer and faith. Because hearing the word, really when we hear the word, it's the first way that we receive it. And then when we examine it, this is the next way we will understand the word. And we do have scriptures here. And so write down those scriptures so that, you know, if you... Are, I know for me, when I first started reading the Word, I, I didn't remember anything. I didn't understand how I really needed to dive into the Word. And so this is really a great guide. As I said, we have great tools um, to help us to be able to lock in in our walk. Analyzing the Word. When you analyze or study the Word, you go deeper into it so it can get into your heart. And then... Um, remembering the word. It helps the word to live in you. That word comes alive in you. And so again, you can pray for those scriptures that are under the hand or the finger. You can write those scriptures down and, and create a confession prayer to help you take in more of his word. And then think, meditate, and then apply. This is the only way to abide fully in the word. And we're learning that in our Bible class, that abiding in Christ really is the only way to really fully um, live as God, um, to as that will please God. So let's go ahead and get started. We are on page 61. Claiming God's promise. How do you let God tell you what he's doing so that you can join him in his work. So several years ago, this is the author, he was with a work group at a denominational publishing house, and they went on a retreat to plan the products and services that they wanted to develop. And so the first day they shared that God had been saying what God had been saying to them through their daily quiet time. And so as they prayed, the author says, we ask the question, Lord, what are you doing or going to do that we need to be involved in? And so the author said, God led us to Isaiah 61, which is quoted in Luke 4, 18, 19 in the margin. So let's look over in the margin. It says, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he hath anointed me to preach 
good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom from the, for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. So what does that really mean? What does that really mean? So as I was, you know, meditating on this a little bit, you know, when, um, when you're in prison, that means you don't have a lot of freedom. But he wants us to have this. He, he has sent us to proclaim freedom for those that may be bound. Those that may not know, that's not living for God, that may not know that, um, that they have freedom in Christ because he created all of us. And so we're really not walking in our design if we are bound with the things of the world. And a recovery of sight, man, I just really didn't know how blind I was. I did not know how blind I was to the things of God until I actually rededicated my life to Christ. And my eyes began to open and see. And so there's a, we may even come in contact with a lot of people that may be blind to the things of Christ. That only thing they know is the world. And when taste and see that that, that I am good is what God says. And once you get, I know for me, once I got that taste, I thought, wow, this is a whole different world. It's a whole living in the kingdom. It's different. And so um, to release the oppressed, people that are weighed down, you can see sometimes the weight. You can see the heaviness. You can see the things that people may be challenged with sometimes, fear. And so God has sent all of us that's why he's equipping us so that we will know, and that's why these um, classes are so great. So he's saying, the author, we left the retreat believing that God wanted them to focus their work on the types of people, on the types of people Jesus came to serve, the prisoners, the blind, and the oppressed. So they plan products to help them based on the word from the Father. Um, they began to look for where God was at work. The first time they noticed God using the scripture to lead them was when Don Dennis, a former convict, y'all, these books have been used in the prisons. Um, a former convict requested help in launching a program to use Master Life in Texas prisons. We responded, and throughout the years, thousands of prisoners have been spiritually released through Master Life in the United States and in many other countries. The First Baptist Church of Houston offered to let us publish, first place, a Christ-centered health program. It has helped thousands learn health, healthful, health, healthyful, healthful, no, health, H-E-A-L-T-H-F-U-L, healthful. Healthful, no, it's not a Lee. Is it a Lee? Okay, I'm sorry. Eating and exercise habits in the context of Christian discipleship. So there is a national known Christian health care organization offered to, they let them publish the biblical materials they had developed. And so this support, it is, they launched a life support series which support group ministers could use to help people with critical issues in their lives, such as painful past, sexual abuse, eating disorders, that's good, chemical dependency, divorce loss, and harmful compulsions. Through those materials, thousands of people have experienced healing that has brought them to Christ or has removed barriers to serving him. So the book is asking us to check the answer that best describes how we approach our search for God's will for our work. And so there are several different choices here. And one choice would be told God what we wanted to do and asked him to bless it. Well, I know that don't work. Implementing our ideas without praying and relied on instinct. I've done that before told God that we wanted what we wanted to do and asked him to show us a scripture that would support our strategy, asked God to show us where he wants us to work next and let and lead us to scripture that guides us. That's where we need to get to, is ask God where he wants us to work. 
and so that he can lead us to the scripture. And so if they had not done it that way, as you, you know, as I started out, they would have been operating outside of God's will. If they would have asked him to bless a set of plans that we had developed without counseling him first. Con Hold on. Consulting him first. I knew that didn't sound right. We asked God to show us in his word where he wanted us to work. This is what the author's saying. And he led them to the scripture. And the scripture that he led them to was Psalms 119, 105. Let's go there. It's a great scripture. Psalms 119, 105. And it reads, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So God, with that, and if we meditate on that, we will learn that God provides daily guidance for us in making decisions, the problems that we face, and meeting our needs. As he works through the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, God's word becomes active, alive, and dynamic in directing your life. And I am on page 62 at the top. As you base your life on the word by faith, it becomes a lamp to your feet and a light for your path. In the margarine, we've already read that, God is, and so what we're going to learn is God is going to reveal his will through his word. We should, we, we've learned that in several other disciple classes and our teachings, but we're going to go a little bit deeper. His word to spiritual sensitivity Believe in Christians who met his conditions. Um, this week, we're going to learn steps for praying in faith. If you could put those steps up, please. At the end of this week, you will be able to identify occasions where you have linked prayer in God's word. We're going to be able to list three stages in making a covenant with God. List six steps for praying in faith. Give examples of persons who prayed in faith on the basis of a word from God. Select a problem or a need about which you want to pray in faith. And so those are the things that we're going to be able to do once we get through this section. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is a covenant with God. That is the relationship between praying in faith and living in the word. Many have come into clearly focus as you reflect on um, living in the word may have come into clear focus as you reflected on what you have already studied in the master life. When you use the prayer covenant list, you will have wondered how to find a Bible promise on which to base your prayers. So in each, in, in the disciples cross, there was a prayer covenant list of people's name that you write down and what you should be praying and what God has laid on your heart to pray for. And so um, you may have wondered how to find a Bible promise on which to base your prayers. A covenant is a promise of a pledge between persons to do something together based on a common agreement. God's covenant with his people is one of the basic ideas in the Bible. The Bible covenants between God and his people has three stages. So stage one. Do you have that, Marcus? Okay, thank you. Mm, no. Stage one, God revealed his will and make a promise. So we're going to go through all of these stages. Um, stage two, the people met the conditions God established. And then stage three, the people believe God and receive the blessing. And so if we'll go to Genesis 6 and 17, we will see that example of all of the stages. So let's turn over there for just a minute. A great story if, um, to those in TV land, if you have not read Genesis, it is actually um, very good story and uh, um, application of life that we get out of Genesis. Love Genesis. 
Okay, so Genesis 6, Genesis chapter 6, verses 17 through 18, and it reads, And behold, I even, I do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. From under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy son's wives with thee. And I'm going to keep reading. And of everything, and of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shall thou bring into the ark. So he's telling them, bring two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female of fowls after their kind, and of cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind. Two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. And take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food, for thee and for them. Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so did he. So he's saying here that he's going to bring flood waters on the earth to destroy it. So he's given instructions. So stage one, it says, and so he's saying here, everything on earth will perish. But I will establish my covenant. And so in this stage one, God revealed his will and made a promise. So he's saying to them, I will establish my covenant with you and will enter the ark. And so nor did everything just as God commanded him. Nor was 600 years old if we go on down to Genesis chapter 7, 6 and 7. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters were upon the earth. See, he didn't tell them when it was going to come, I don't believe. But he told them it was coming. And Noah went and his sons and his wife and his son's wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. And so, and Noah and his son's wife and son's wives entered the ark to escape the waters. So he gave instructions there and he met the conditions of the things that he established and the people believed him and they, they received a blessing. Um, and so in that, we see that those are stages of God's covenant. And so as we will learn, one way we live in the word and the word lives in us is to help us experience victory, is to think about it. So we're, um, as we're learning how God's word is revealed, his will, as we pray in faith, we're going to learn through this teaching that living in the word and the word lives in us will help us to experience the victory. Because we're going to be thinking, just think about when you really, really, really get into his word. When you really leave here, because think about it. We're here at, many of us at 845. We don't leave here to 1.30, maybe 2 o'clock. And so we have just been taken in and we've been in his presence and we've been taken in his word. We're thinking about that. We're thinking about that. We're thinking about what God is really saying. We should be thinking about what God is really saying to us. And so that we can live out the word. How many times do we say, well, Pastor Keith said what is not exposed can't be helped. Or whatever the word he's teaching that day. Um, you know, the healing. He really, you know, in the healing teaching, there was a lot of emphasis on the word. And so... In that, so we're going to talk about meditation. This week, we will learn to meditate on God's Word. Meditation has been called reflecting thinking with a view to application. It involves misusing, pondering, and thinking about God's Word in such a way that the message of the Scripture is applied to specific need in your life. And so a great promise in God's word is our memory scripture. It is the confidence that we have in him. 
And so deals with the relationship between God's blessings and meditation. So how to use the God to meditation, Marcus, if you do want to put that up. And we're going to use the scripture, 1 John, chapter 5, 14, and um, through 15, uh, 14, verses 14 through 15. I actually, um, hopefully I got that, did, um, wrote it out and went through that exercise um, because I think it's good sometimes if we can give examples, okay? And so it says here, In the guide, sorry, y'all, I got a bunch of papers up here. Um, how to use the guide. Do a meditation study in section a few minutes each day. So that you don't have to try to accomplish all of this in one day. You can meditate. The goal is for us, because we've learned really in survival kit that we should be having quiet time. So really committing ourselves to really meditating on the memory scripture memory scriptures could be something that we do in our quiet time. Concentrating on one verse a week. So you may do a meditation study in sections, and I just read that. Um, and so ordinarily, you may prefer to select a verse you have been memorizing or perhaps the key verse in passage or a chapter. So whatever verse is standing out to you, but like I said, I am really trying to follow this book to get the most out of it because I've gone through this book several times and I know that the, the disciples' personality going over it again and really going through the book again and, you know, taking on the suggestions that is recommended was very helpful for me in mastering some emotions using that action um, diagram there. And so here, during, after you select a verse, we want to pray claiming James 1.5 for wisdom to apply God's word. So let's go over to James 1.5. So it says, after we select the verse, that we should pray. So let's go to James 1.5. If any of you like wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liter liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. And so in this, we're going to pray for wisdom and surrender to the Holy Spirit so that he will make the word come alive in our heart. So, God, I, I, I ask for an increase of wisdom. I want to surrender to the Holy Spirit as I'm meditating on this word, Father God, so that your word will come alive in my heart. Just, it, it can be a prayer just that simple. So read the verse before and the verse to establish the theme and the setting, which will aid you in interpretation. Then write a summary of the passage. So I actually took 1 John chapter 5, 14 and 15. And so I read the scripture before and after, and this is what I wrote. Because I have eternal life, every, and that means everlasting life, I can ask knowing that he heareth my request. That is according to his will. The things that pleases him is according to his will, okay? Because I have confidence in who he is, whether it's big or whether it's small. And so one of the things when I first started this walk, yeah, I used to ask for the big things thinking I can handle the little things. But y'all, the little things may just be the schedule in your day because these jobs put a lot of demands on us. And so I find myself sometimes getting very overwhelmed with all the things that I had to do. And I would, I, on the um, prayer line at five o'clock, I would pray that God would orchestrate my schedule. But I had to go a little bit deeper than that. I had to say, God, this demand that they're putting on me right now, 
I just don't see how I can get it done. So I just put it on you right now. And so I started doing that more and more, just stopping right there because stuff just coming, phones ringing, people need stuff. And I'm just like, wait, God, I put this demand on you. And I just let your will be done. It doesn't have to be a long prayer, but I'm saying that to say he want. it is the confidence I have in him that anything that I ask according to his will, and that means that I am giving him all control. I can't do this by myself. I need to give it to him, the thinking, whatever, I need to give it to him. And I will say this is the very first time Last week that I went on vacation, and I may have opened, because somebody asked me for something, and they had my personal number, but I did it for them. But normally, I would have my phone. Normally, I have, and if people call or ask, I would, mm -mm, no, I did not do that. I haven't even checked my emails from, and I probably got three, four hundred, I don't know how many I got, but God can take care of it. You know, because we get into that, I got to get this done, I got to get this done, but that's my own strength. God knows what I need. God knows that, and so I just got to acknowledge him. And so acknowledging him, it is the confidence that I have in him, that he'll work it out. And I, I, I had told myself on Friday I was going to log in. I told myself I was going to, I haven't logged in yet. I probably ain't going to log in until tomorrow. I'm just saying, because again, I'm really trusting God. You know, you're not supposed to be anxious for anything, and I can't worry about all the stuff that I, 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 I just can't. I got, that, that's, a, that's a new area when it comes to work. So write the verse in your own words. Say your, prayer, uh, your um, paraphrase aloud. So then you got to digest the verse by using three ways to assimilate its truth. Emphasize a different word in the verse. And so when I emphasize in, in, in that, the two, and it says, emphasize a different word in the verse as you read or repeat it. Then state the opposite meaning to reveal what the verse says. So that's like going a little bit deeper, you know, with that verse. Write at least two important words from those you have emphasized in the verse. So the two important words that I wrote were ask and hear. And so I have some scriptures. So for the ask, I've got John 14 and 14. Let's go there. And this is an audible team. It's not in the um, notes for those that are on TV land. So that is John 14, 14. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. So let's go to John. And so when we're praying and we know that it lines up with God's will, it is the confidence in him that we have. So I know I'm talking about my schedule here, but, you know, there's been times when I say, God, <laughs> you know what these bills look like. And so I'm just putting my trust in you and there that, hey, that he want, you know, and for me, it was like, will you trust me? Will you trust me? You trust me with that. So why do you don't trust me to orchestrate your, your schedule? Um, and so chapter 15, oh, we already read 15, John 15 and 7. Let's go to John 16 and 24. That's a good one. John 16 and 24. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name? Ask, and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. One more. Matthew 7 and 7. So these are all about asking you all. All about asking. Mark 7. And seven. No, not Mark seven, Matthew, excuse me, y'all. Matthew seven and seven. We know ask and it shall be given. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. So I took those two important words because if I'm asking, he hears. 
I'm communicating with God. And we learned in the foundational class that communication, that prayer is communication with God and stating your, um, I think the way Pastor Keith had to read, stating your case and then waiting to hear from God. So prayer is just not getting down, and it's not just telling God all the things that you want, but we got to listen, and we've got to hear what God is saying. So, so when we're meditating on whatever scripture we're meditating on, ask these questions about the two words to relate the scripture to your needs. And so, um, so the questions that we should be asking is what? And so in that... I did ask the what, and the what was, he said anything, what? So in, in the scripture that, and I'm going to turn back to it so I can reference it a little bit, First John, because that's the scripture that I am committing to memory, and he's saying, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And so the question, so God, what? You said anything, anything according to your will. Why? Why will he, why do we have the confidence in him? Because he hears us. When we're speaking to God, he hears us. Um, what? What do we have? We have the petitions that we ask of him. Where? It is written in his word. It is written in his word. And who's going to give us those petitions? The son of God. How? With confidence. It's confidence in him. It is confidence in him. And so I really like this. That, you know, there's other scriptures that you can take this exercise and just really kind of um, meditate on it and, and, and get down to the what, the why, um, the where the who, and the how. So then we've got to let the Holy Spirit apply the verse to a need, a challenge, an opportunity, or a failure in your life. What will you do about the verse as it relates to your life? Be specific. Be specific. So as we're praying, Lord, it is the confidence that I have in you that all these things that are coming against me right now, all these phone calls, all these things, I want to be able to serve your people. But Lord, <clears throat> whatever you need to do in this hour, whatever you need to do to make sure I get the things that are supposed to be done for me today. And so knowing that it is the confidence that I have, pray the verse back to God. We can pray that verse back to God. It is the confidence that I have in you. Um, peril passages refer to other passages that emphasize the truth. And that's what we did. I picked out other scriptures that goes with ask. I didn't, I didn't um, pick out any that says here. I should have, but that'll be in my next exercise. Problems in the verse. Let List thoughts or ideas you might not understand. And this is really good because Pastor Keith talks about this and Pastor Melanie um, that you might have difficult to apply. And we, have, we have a lot of fellowships going on. If you don't understand something in, your, in the Word, that's an opportunity. Bible fellowship in the morning. We have Wednesday night service where you get to come up to the mic and ask the question. And we not only have that, we have Bible class. And not only that, you have your sisters and brothers here. Hey, I was reading this, and tell me, because sometimes we can make up our, our own interpretation. And so that's important to know that. And then possibilities for helping others through the verse. Right away, you can use this verse to help another person. And then um, protracted study, uh, record plans for the future study of the verse. So thank you for that, Marcus. Now we're going to go into, on page 65, to talk about demolishing personal spiritual strongholds. So by now, we should become more and more aware of personal spiritual strongholds. And I know there has been several sections in this book that um, we're talking about that in your life that, you, that needs to be demolished. Based on your study in previous weeks, 
Um, the author is saying he hoped that you've had a chance to be able to see changes in the areas of bitterness, speech, and lust through the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. And I would say really, um, for me, just taking the time out to really speak correctly, not just saying anything is so important. So I have a bunch of people around me that will correct me in the minute. And so that's very helpful because I remember when I had a mentor at work year, many years ago, and I would always say, had went. Had went? She looked at me, had went. And I still remember this today. So if I say had went, some of you may not recognize it, but I will back up and say, no, went. I would put the had went before, and that was incorrect. And she would interrupt me because I gave her permission to interrupt me in meetings. And people said, they don't get on your I said, no, because ain't nobody ever told me. So I'm learning something new. So I'm saying that the speech, because when you're used to speaking a certain way and you're used to just saying stuff, you, you really have to pay attention. You re and I noticed that we're doing that a lot even on our Bible fellowship, of what we're communicating, making sure that what we're communicating really is lining up with the word and what we're communicating is not going to send someone down the wrong path. And so, um, so I know for me, that may have been something that's, you know, it talks about the areas of bitterness, speech, and lust through the word of the Holy Spirit. So we're going to look at another area to demolish the stronghold of religious rituals. Um, four criteria in math. Uh, there's four criteria that is in Matthews 23, 1 and 8, that tells us when religious rituals become a spiritual stronghold. But I'm going to read over here in the... Um, in the um, margin right now. Be careful not to do your acts of righteous before men, to be seen by them. If you do, you will have a reward from your father. If you do, you will have no reward from your father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them for your father knowing that you need before you ask him. And so in reading that, <laughs> it was something just recently that I had got down to pray for. And I heard God say very quickly, and I thought I was going to be down there a long time. Because, you know, and I heard God say very quickly, my will shall be done. And so I think of that as, you know, you know, sometimes we, when we're doing something, we, I may have picked up something, you know, that this is the way that we do it, or this is the way that we do it, and that may not be the case. God didn't want me to spend a lot of time down on that floor praying about that because he said his will would be done, and I got up. I didn't keep praying. Um, and so it says here from Matthew 23, 1, 8, um, that we can tell others to do when you tell others to do what you're not practicing. We should not be telling others things and we're not practicing it. If that happens, that's speaking to you right then. You know, I'm telling you to do that, but I do the same thing. Um, when you're demand actions that Jesus has not commanded, that's verse 4, and this is Matthews 23, 1 through 8, and you guys can take some time and look at that on your own. When you do religious activities to be seen by others is verse 5 through 7. And when you accept honor positions or authority for religious service. 
So I encourage you to spend some time with the spiritual strongholds to just become aware if you even have any. You may not have any, and that's great, but, you know, we always want to check in with the Holy Spirit to see what God gives us. And that is going to end today, claiming God's promises is what we talked about today. So are there any questions to those that are online? Okay, any questions here in the sanctuary? Any comments in the sanctuary? All right, praise God. Uh, great job, Sephora. Praise God. And, um, you know, I really like this teaching, you know, based on the fact that it really gives you a breakdown of analyzing the word. Um, we started out with the teachings um, early on um, in Victory that talks about us being victorious, but it's through the Word of God that we are victorious. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of emphasis placed on the Word of God in those previous teachings, mm -hmm. how important it is to read the Word of God, to memorize the Word of God, to speak the Word of God, to confess the Word of God. God. And today you've given us the instructions and righteousness that we need and breaking down the word of God when we read the word of God. So this has been really good. Thank Praise you. Praise God. Thank you, Trina. Sister Trina. Anybody else? Okay. With that Okay, we don't have anybody else, so I'll just close us out in prayer. So Father God, we just thank you that you seal your word in us, Lord. Hallelujah. So that we can walk in the victorious life that you have planned for us because you know the plans and the thoughts that you think toward us, Lord. So we thank you, Father God. It is the confidence that we have in you that anything that we ask according to your will, Father God, that we know that you hear it us. And if we know that you hear us, Father God, we know that we have the petitions of you, Lord. So we thank you, Father God, that we're able to wait, Father God. We're able to wait because your timing is always on time, Father God. Whatever your sons and daughters and whatever I may be praying for, Father God, that you, Father God, um, you are just our own time, God. So we just thank you, Father God, and how you will continue to move um, in our praise and worship, how you will continue to move in our service, Lord. We just thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.